Hi everyone, welcome to the shack or the back garden. Um, I posted a quick video on, on a contact I made with a special event station in Madeira um, using this home brew dipole for 10 meters. And uh, I think at the time I said that I'd post another video just, br just briefly explaining how I put it together. So, um, which is what this, what this is. Since I first built this, um, I've adjusted the telescopic radials for 10 meters because I built this primarily for six. And the reason I did that was because I'd been having a conversation with some of the Harwell ARS members on a Zoom call a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about six meters. It's actually really windy today and um, it's remarkably solid. Uh, and that kind of inspired me. I thought, well, I've got the parts to, to make the uh, six meter dipole. Um, had them quite a long time. So uh, I decided to, to build the thing. Um, and what, what it is, is when I purchased the TS 990, the Kenwood from Moonraker, um, the more you spend, the more watts they give you, which are basically a bit like collecting points at uh, Tesco's. And I managed to buy the dipole center, which you can hopefully see as I've zoomed in, um, and it's got two threads on it for, for telescopic and the telescopic uh, antennas um, for not very much. I think I paid about 20 or 30 quid or something, but that's because I'd obviously spent quite a lot of money buying the uh, Kenwood. Um, the tele the Moonraker sell all this stuff. The, the, the telescopics are actually, I think they're 14 and a half feet long, fully extended, which means that you can build a resonant dipole from 70 megahertz down to 14.3 megahertz. So uh, at the moment, for 10 meters, each of the, they're both basically 2.5 meters uh, long. And um, the way that I've got it mounted, uh, it's probably, I wouldn't want to go much further than that. So, um, so I had those parts and um, you probably can't see, but the, the post they're attached to is actually blue. And that's a piece of rigid high pressure airline that I borrowed. Um, it's a few meters long uh, and everything's basically cable tied uh, to the top of it using UV resistant cable ties, obviously. Um, and then I've then basically inserted that high pressure airline into the second of the telescopic sections on this uh, tripod um, just by using spaces basically and then it's screwed in both sides so it can't move uh, and then the tripod itself i actually bought this at the um newbury radio rally getting on for two years ago now uh it's quite i bought it because i've i've always liked experimenting um with antennas although i haven't had a lot of time to do that recently i don't know whether you can sort of pick up how large this thing is it's pretty big and the, the three feet on the bottom uh, are actually um spread out about they're, they're about um, more than a meter apart if you see what i mean so um it's got quite a wide sort of spread on the on the base of it and then you've got basically a rigid pole here um, and then you've got uh, two, two more sections that uh, telescope, telescope out. Um, and it all came part of a, as part of a kit. Um, there's three guy lines, which you can see are attached to a kind of central retaining ring via uh, three sort of carabiner type clips down to, and they're adjustable obviously. Um, and then they attach to a hook, which has got a thread on it, which is about, I don't know, 15 centimeters long and quite handily. You, you, the, the, the kit even comes with a socket so you can actually wind these into the ground with an electric drill, which I did, and they're very secure. Um, so absolute necessity. This thing would have fallen over almost immediately um, in the, with the slightest gust of wind, but uh, with, with these three um, rods on there, uh, sorry, uh, guy ropes on there, it's actually very, very solid. You can see it's wobbling about a little bit. Uh, and it's actually pretty windy today, so it was uh, quite a good idea to, to uh, make this video and, and, and demonstrate that. So that was it, really. Um, I can't remember how much I paid for the tripod. Um, it was the last one he had, and I don't think he wanted to... I don't think he was planning to sell it, actually. He sold a few, um, but I managed to convince him. Uh, and I can't... 90, 80 or 90 quid kind of springs to mind, but I'm not 100% sure. But um, 
this is the first time I've kind of used it. That's not actually. I was going to say it's the first time I've used it in anger, but I actually used it to support uh, quadrophilia uh, uh, antenna for um, decoding NOAA weather satellites. I've used it once for that, but only for about a day. Uh, so there you go. So that's my uh, homebrew uh, resonant 10 meter dipole. And um, as you would have seen from the earlier video, I, I, I took this down to extend the telescope, the telescoping sections out to 10 meters, put it all back up, uh, to retention the guy ropes, um, went into the shack, sat down in front of the radio and, um, and I could hear uh, the, the, the station that I worked in Madeira um, straight away. So I literally put this, put this back together and, and worked a QSO um, in the space of uh, like literally a couple of minutes. So, uh, which is good. Um, when I had this thing rigged up for six meters, it was, I had it up for about a week and literally didn't hear one single uh, signal on sideband. Um, I could hear FT8 quite loudly, but nothing else. Um, sat around waiting for days for um, some sporadic E, some kind of lift, but didn't hear anything in the end, gave up and thought I'd try 10 meters. Now I've had quite a lot of success on 10 meters in the past, worked a lot of stations in South America um, using my uh, uh, wire antenna, NFED wire. Um, but this is quite nice. And so obviously if I wanna, you know, it's, it's adjustable, uh, as I said, from 70 megahertz down to 14.3. Uh, so uh, I can adjust it again and try other bands. It's a, it's a quite handy thing. And the only downside really is that um, it's not really high enough. I'm guessing it's probably one, maybe six or seven meters above the ground. So it's definitely at least three or four meters sort of too low, but I, that's probably about as much as I'm comfortable with, with this stand. Um, but it obviously is resonant and that makes a difference. And I've tested this antenna against my sort of non-resonant wire, um, which obviously has to be matched via the internal matching unit in the Kenwood. Uh, and the dipole performs better, even though it's probably two or three meters lower. So um, just goes to show that um, if you can build an antenna that's resonant, that doesn't require any matching, obviously that's the most efficient way of getting your signal out there. And you can do it with a essentially a smaller antenna. I know that obviously this is a balanced antenna and my NFED wire isn't, but uh, it works better than my wire, which is basically uh, good enough for me for now. So uh, so there you go. So, um, so yeah, a, a, a stand that I got from uh, Newbury Radio Rally, a piece of borrowed high pressure uh, rigid uh, air, uh, air, high pressure air uh, sort of pipe, um, and then a dipole center and two telescopic uh, radials that I got cheap from Moonraker. Um, I'd say the, the whole, well, the whole lot, I guess probably cost about a hundred quid, which is a lot more than I paid for my uh, NFED wire, well, at least the first version of it. But for a hundred quid, um, you've got an antenna that actually works. I put 200 watts into it, no problem at all. So, uh, so there you go. Anyway, that's it. That's my 10 meter homebrew dipole. Thanks for watching, 73.